welcome back to another video. So in this one, what we're gonna be going through is how to achieve perfect on-page SEO. So what I've got here is just an example of my main website. So I've written this article, and this is usually how you get back an article from a writer. So I've written this and I've published it, and I didn't do any on-page SEO like in regards to keyword density or anything like that, okay? so. Apparently, what you can see on the right hand side is a tool called Surfer SEO. So you can actually use this tool by going over to their website, but um, they've now got an extension, a Google extension, where you can uh, toggle it on and off on an article and edit on your actual website. Okay, so whilst after you've written your article, you can toggle it on and then optimize it. I wouldn't recommend doing it whilst you're writing because it can veer you off topic, you know, so you just want to write and dump it out and then after you've got the content written, then you can optimize it. So this is usually the stage where you'll get your content after a writer has written it. So they're not gonna optimize it or anything like that. That's your job as the SEO. So when we come here, there's first three things that I pay attention to in order to rank. So you wanna get your target keyword in, in the title and you wanna incorporate it in some way that, that looks natural. So if it was Savage Affiliate Review, which was singular, but the keyword doesn't make sense like that, then I'll just add the S, you know, it's completely fine, you'll still rank for it, like I've tested this and it, and it still works, okay? The next thing is a lot of people recommend using Yoast and whatever else. Now, I think at this stage, you'd probably know that it's outdated, but I don't, I don't think I have it installed on this, so I've got Rank Math on this site. But what you can use those tools for is to just give you a kind of idea of what you need to do. So it gives you like a, a little bit of an idea, but you don't want to get them all green and all of that. Don't worry about that. What you want to do is if you're missing something like the focus keyword, it helps you to identify that. Yeah. So any of the major things that you're missing, that's what I use it for as a kind of guideline just to touch up and see, did I miss anything major inside of this? So when it says add focus keyword to your meta description, I don't really care about that, yeah, because majority of the time Google's gonna pull the uh, meta description that it wants to add to the article that for the in the SERPs anyway. Okay, use focus keyword in URL. Again, if you're if you're using it like you've done your permalink and whatever else and you think it's fine, don't worry about it. Use focus keyword in the content. You do wanna get your uh, focus keyword in the permalink at some point, but it's not be all and end all sort of thing, you know? But look, you can see Savage Affiliates reviews the keyword I'm targeting. Yes, it's not exactly in the way that it wants me to write it in it without the 2.0 and whatever else, but I want it like that. So I'm keeping it like that, okay? So if we take a look at this again, we can see that it says content uh, length. I don't ever pay attention to this for content length, like use Surfer SEO or just go and gauge or use key search. Yeah, so what this does is it basically takes an average of the top 10 ranking pages and it, it figures out an average. So what it will do is add all of these numbers up and then divide it by 10 because there's 10 results and that gives you an average, yeah? Now, sometimes you're gonna notice that the average will be pushed up by certain particular pages. So for example, if you take a look at this, it's 9,000 words. What you need to do when you see something that substantial, it's over like three or 4,000, you need to come and check and see if that's being made up by comments because a lot of the time, the actual content is not that long. Look, see, so they've got a bunch of comments and that's what's actually pushing up that average. So the tool's taking everything into account. You don't want that. You actually just want to figure out an average of just the actual content, okay? So the way you can do that is by using a Google extension called Word Counter Plus. That will give you an average there or just copy it and then just copy it into a tool that gives you word count. Just type free word counter online and you'll find a bunch of tools. And just do that for like the top three. If you can find the top three and they're relevant pages like similar to yours, like a blog style kind of article, then that will give you a good average and you'll be able to work off that, okay? So anyway, the way that you uh, achieve perfect on-page SEO is you, you do these three things. So you do this, the permalink and the SEO title. You wanna get your keyword in there at some point. Meta description is not as important. Like, so don't worry about that too much. 
Um, there's no kind of evidence to say that that's actually a Google ranking factor. But the way that it can affect everything is basically the meta description will affect your click through rate and your click through rate is a ranking factor. OK, so it's in indirect ranking factor. But once you've got this and you got your content readability, so, you know, like, you know, if you're missing some things that like you're repeating keywords, this will identify that. Like, say, for example, you keep saying this, 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 then you start it again, this, that it will identify that. So that is just basic, like bad readability for your reader if they keep reading the same thing over and over. So if you see any of them kind of things, those are the things you want to pay attention to. Okay, so you can edit your snippet here and this is the meta description, so on and so forth. And you can do all of that, how it looks in the actual results of Google. Okay, so once you've done that, the next thing you want to do, if you are using Surfer SEO, which I'd highly recommend, there's a link in the description for that, is um, the tools, I think it's about $30, $40 a month or something like that, but it's well worth the money. It will give you the optimal keywords to use. Okay, so if I'm mentioning affiliate marketing inside of here, or I haven't mentioned it, most importantly, then that's something you really want to add in. So you can see here I've got affiliate marketing, but not affiliate marketing course. Okay, and I've used it like about nine times, but on average, the top 10 ranking sites are using it 31 times. Okay, so the way you can actually uh, select the sites to compare yourself to is if you click customize. Now, what you want to do when you're doing this is you want to go for the ones that have a high content score so they've tried to just give you the answers okay you can check the authority this is based on their domain the score they give it on a score of one to ten and uh, the average traffic now a lot of the time this kind of is incorrect okay so these sites probably have way more traffic than what this is picking up and then it gives you their average word count as well so you can see these lot are actually factoring out the comments okay because they haven't got 9,000 odd for this so they're actually just taking into context the actual content within the body tags so as we come down you can see like these lot are a, a bad score okay but that's actually savageaffiliates.com so that's the sales page and when we take a look at all of this it's taking into account all the varying factors that they believe Google are currently running on to use to rank a page okay so it's your images your bolded text your h1 titles keyword density keyword placement page speed all of the different things that you need to rank okay what you want to do is go for usually things that are over 80 <clears throat> to compare yourself to so you're going to try and optimize just like them if you get 90 plus then so on and so forth even better the highest scores are the ones you want to go for and you want to at least compare yourself to three variables on or, or more okay so if we come over here you can see drew's review and if you catch them with like low authorities th this is quite accurate you know it, based on the authority of the site if you go and compare this to like dr or dda and all that it, they'll be relatively low authority sites because these are blogs i've re read most of these guys uh, sites and stuff but um if we take a look at this they're all low authority so what's good about this as well is because this can help you to determine how difficult the term is that you're going for so i can see a bunch of low competition keywords because some of the other ones i've gone for are very high comp so you see a bunch of green like tens and eights up here and that's quite intimidating because it would take a lot of money to actually outrank those kind of sites so when we take a look at this i would pick that one that one above 80 uh, we've got a 78 here i'll definitely pick that that and that now the tool's automatically done it it gives you an average word count of 4573 words um, how many headings you need to have so you can see i'm green on all of these and i haven't even optimized it with the tool yet this is just purely naturally what i've done that's why i said just do it naturally first of all and then after that you'll be able to see where you are at and optimize it further so then what you want to do is you want to get majority of these green now you're never going to get all of them green like that's unrealistic there's way too many words to get in here but what you can do and it, you want to add the ones that make sense if it doesn't make sense and it's back to front kind of words i saw like hack hatchet franklin and all that kind of stuff just now you don't want to put those kind of things in okay so like what savage affiliates i might not use that because it doesn't really make sense okay so what you can do is you can see like i'm missing the actual keyword i'm trying to target savage affiliates and savage affiliates review i'm only using it one time and it's it, it advising me that i should use it uh, 
on average of 11 times. So if you click it, you can actually now see how the competitors are using it in their content. So it gives you like a little few examples of try it, something like Savage Affiliates Review Reddit, blah, 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 all of that. So you can include it and you know how to incorporate it into your text if you're unsure how to put this in. So Franklin Hatchet, we've got there as well, okay? So what we would do is we would come and find a place on the on the page and you would add these keywords in. So when I add this, you'll be able to see it. It just added it and it's now gone into medium, which is yellow. And you would obviously add that a few more times. So you can see it just went green. And, and that's now telling me I've hit the optimal uh, amount of times of using this within an article. What you want to do also is you want to you want to use a few outbound links. OK, now a lot of people um, will give you outbound links like to say, you know, don't do it for the reader, do it purely for the search engines. I personally uh, include outbound links for the readers, OK, because I believe that if you have them at focus of helping them, it's, it's going to be the best thing you can do. The only thing I don't do is add them right at the top of the article. If you add an outbound link right here, and it's not like an internal link to another article on your site. Well, that means someone might come in and you're going to make a commission on this and someone's going to click off straight away onto this other site and you've lost the customer. OK, so you don't want to be putting them anywhere at the top half of the article. You want them in the lower sections of the article. And the two things that I mainly focus on is linking to authoritative references and link into topics that will better help the reader. Okay, sometimes I might have two, sometimes I might have five. I would always start with two as a baseline for any piece of content over 2,000 words. So you wanna add at least one every 1,000 words, okay? So once you've done that, you then wanna add any alt tags to your images. Now, what this is mainly for is in regards to your on-page SEO is to help people who are blind and they need like the wording to be re read out to them vocally so they can understand what the image is. That's what that's for. But what that can also help you to do is it can help you to increase your keyword densities. OK, so if you had a keyword here and it was singular and it didn't make sense to put in your article, you could go ahead and just use that inside of your alt tag. OK, so that will increase your on page optimization. But secondly, what that can also do is it can uh, help you to rank in Google images. So when you see people like ranking in Google images, which gets quite a lot of traffic as well, you can get some additional traffic and pick up some extra traffic there by obviously having your images in there, okay? And if you have like personal images, this can also help you to get some backlinks, you know, because if people are using your images and they're referencing it, then obviously they'll be linking to the source of where they got that image, okay? So really and truly, that's about it for on-page SEO, to be honest. I don't really do much more. Like, I mean, there are more things you can do, but I mainly focus on the title, the meta description and the permalink, images, outbound links, and then all of the wording is how I do that with uh, Surfer SEO. So there'll be a link below to actually sign up to Surfer SEO is an affiliate link. And um, yeah, I usually try and go for a score above 80 or plus. Yeah, and that's that's where you want to be. And that's it. Like once you've got the content written, you're happy with it and you've optimized it. You want to come back and check it like every three months or so because there might be competing sites and the SERPs change. So when it changes, it will change the way that you should optimize the content. OK, and the words that you should use and the length of the content and so on and so forth. So if your content becomes stagnant or something, maybe do it every six months, once a year, however often you choose to do it is up to you you know like as i said don't don't have any outbound links unless it's to your affiliate product or an internal link at the top and uh, make sure that you are covering like relatively similar words inside of your subheadings and you want to make sure that your heading structure is correct as well that's another thing okay so like when you come in if you have a h2 anything that's a subtopic of this kind of topic here then that needs to go into a h3 and if you go further into a subtopic of this h3 heading then you go into a h4 okay so like you can see here that i've got it like that in in this breakdown of what's inside and then because this is still within a breakdown of what's inside the article it goes into a further h4 but if you come back to a major topic again then you go back into h2 as i came back into something that was still within 
this kind of heading maybe i could improve this to be honest as i came back into like introduction and whatever you know who created the program so maybe like what's inside introduction would would go under that okay so i could even do with redoing that that's what you want to do and that's what will help you to rank as well and help google to understand your page what you're trying to do with on-page seo is just help the search engine to understand your content and structure it in a way that's beneficial to your readers to navigate the page so on and so forth i'd also advise using a table of contents lots of media and lots of links to relevant sources and internal links to help you to rank as well okay so that's it I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did gain something useful then make sure to smash the like button. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Peace.